Hello and welcome to a new video about automation. This time we are talking a little bit about the history of automation. And this is not that old automation systems. Industry processes and so on, they were there quite a long time. However, before the 1950s, all things were controlled by hand. You know, there was a measurement, the measurement was there, the next thing was there was some valve or something like that. It needed to be operated on site, at site, at location. Yeah? There is the valve, you need to operate there. Yeah? And if somewhere else is a valve, you need to operate there. Yeah? So you needed quite a lot of people who all knew when to do what to start up a process, to change a process. This was also not that easy. You needed really trained personnel. You needed really uh, persons who, who, who could work together, yeah? can rely on each other. This was not that easy. Yeah? I mean, imagine, imagine you want to do start a refining oil or something like this just with a bunch of people standing around turning the right knobs at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Then it started, they started to try to, to, to bring the measurement to somewhere else and also put in there some switches, okay, so that a person can control this and this and this valve with this and that measurement point. Yeah, this was 1950s, there were then some relays and, and analog computers. Yeah? Uh, and this was the first things which are going into the direction of, of automated systems. Yeah? So in the 1950s uh, there were relays and, and, and analog computers. Yeah? 1950s relays Analog computers. This was the first time they were built in in some desks or whatever and can be controlled from there, but also distributed because you know the the communications interfaces and so on, they were all not that that uh, rigid or cannot be over miles, something like this. <laughs> it was simply not thinkable. Yeah? However, in the 1960s then, there were uh, connection-based controls, uh, electronic controls also already, uh, who decided according to some inputs what to do next and so on. And there was also a process controller, process process computer. Those process computers, it's really hard to, to explain what it is from our today's perspective. It looks like it was just a computer with a bunch of in and outputs, getting measurements from all over. There was no, no, no keyboard or something like this, or mouse or screen. It was it somehow looks like an, an, an PLC. Yeah. However, it was, it was a computer specifically built for exactly that purpose. That's the, that's the huge difference. Yeah. Also the software, the hardware and everything was for exactly this process which should be automated. Okay. Of course, the companies inside, they had their standard solution of a process computer yeah, and they adapted it. However, the final process computer was always for a specific dead plant, dead automated system. There was a lot of information, well a lot of, from others perspective not, from then perspective a lot of information were calculated inside this process computer 
and and decided then what to do. Yeah? So this was then the first really automated system who could start maybe a process or stop a process. Yeah? The personnel was then not outside somewhere, sondern watching over this process computer. Yeah? Were then, uh, you know, typical typical examples of such process computers are controls in process industry, of course. Yeah? Then also the engine control inside our our vehicle, you now inside our car, something like a specific process computer for exactly that task. Used to control the ignition, pa 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 pa. Yeah? And also computers are small small microcontrollers which do the job in in white elements. Yeah? Washing machine, dishwasher, stuff like this. Yeah? This would also be a process computer. Yeah? The, the, the difference between a process computer and a PLC, this is very nebula, yeah? it's, not, it's, it's, it's not a sharp edge, yeah? it's flowing from, each, from one to each other. At this type, there were huge walls filled with, with information, a lot of signs and everything. Yeah? So there was the, the, at the control station was, looked like yeah, look look at, at, at science fiction movies of the of the 1960s, yeah, 70s, early 70s. You see what they thought, yeah, how a modern system looked like, a huge things with blinking lights and a lot of scales and whatever and everything is and switches everywhere. And this is because it looks it looked that way. Okay? <laughs> it's because it looked that way simply. Yeah? So in the 1960s, 1960s, oh, 1690s, no, <laughs> not that early, 1960s, they yeah, were process computer. Process computer, yeah, huge control valves, uh, control walls. Something like this. In the 1970s, then PLC started to rise. Okay, first PLC started to rise. One control system applicable, adaptable to the task, and so on. Uh, and also, a, a lot of tasks were then shifted from these process computers to the PLCs. Okay, uh, but. However, there was still there was still a lot of unique solutions. Yeah? The, the interoperability between the systems this was simply not given. Yeah? All those automated systems they were all unique. They were all prototypes. Yeah? It's not like nowadays you buy a PLC, you program a little bit, plug it, and there are standard signals. And no, 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 no. This was a little bit more more sophisticated, a little bit more more uh, less mature, simply. Okay, less mature. Let's call it. Yeah? And the big companies, they also, you know, they, they did not really like this because they had their plant which was running with this system. They had their plant which is running it with this system and so on. They could not shift personnel. So if there is a specialist on this plant, it was he was or she was useless at the other plant. And this was not, they were not really satisfied with this. Yeah? This was the 19, 1970s. Then in the 1980s, yeah, 1970s, PLCs appear. And we have from the process computer we have a shift to the PLCs. And because of this, what I said, yeah, with the big companies and so on, there were then tasks to unify things. 
Yeah? So, uh, in the, in the, there was then the, the OSI ISO layer model of communication and so on. This was then in this time, this was the origin of this because we wanted to have interoperability that one system can talk to another system. So communication was the real problem. Okay. And this uh, then lead to this OSI ISO layer system, which then enabled communication between different systems. And this was then the breakthrough of automation systems, automation control systems, okay, LED technic. This was the real starting point where, you can, where we started to do networking, okay. On the computer side, there were Unix-based solutions, uh, which were also more unified than the old process computers, yeah, and uh, also also personal computers, PCs, who were never intended to work inside an environment, an industry environment, were then starting to, to drag in as industry PC solution. Yeah, suddenly you had a you had a keyboard, you had a mouse, you had a yeah, and you were still able to communicate with your with your automated systems. Uh, this was the 1980s. Ozi layer communication industry PC. A lot of experts then said, okay, industry PC, especially with Windows NT, uh, it was great boost for this yeah. and industry pc they will take over they will take over all the automated it did not come that way right plcs are still the most important things because plcs simply did get powerful okay with all those possibilities then of communication in the 1980s yeah, and now we finally in the early 1990s then, there were the OPC standard invented, which further boost the intercommunication between elements. So all those developed network automated systems, yeah, which did have their own structure and so on, yeah, they were starting to grow together. Yeah. So this pyramid we talked about were building up. So now we could communicate with different automated systems and still there is information exchange, yeah? not only jibber jabber. <laughs> so uh, at this level mainly Ethernet is used for communication and TCP IP is pretty much the standard, developed, was developing to the standard. Uh, so all those automated Highlands, it's called, in the 1990s, they were then connected. Uh, so, 1990s. Automated Highlands. Were connected. To each other, of course. Huh? And they could really this is then where communication really boosted and brought in the field. Okay. In the 2000s, this was, you know, more of the same. Because the basic, the basic things, they were solved in the 1990s. Communications and so on. In the, in the 2000s, it would it get more sophisticated. Yeah, there were other protocols. Yeah also transferring timestamps, for instance, or something like this, yeah. Uh, that's, that's the 2000s. Yeah. So, and now we are living in a world where a lot of systems support a lot of different communication standards, yeah, and we pretty much all the system can talk to all of the rest of the system. Yeah. So there are different standards crystallized, and 
Uh, it was also a task in the 2000s yeah, to, 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 to do those, implement different standards, yeah, which can be supported by all of this was then, this was then uh, maybe the achievement of the 2000s. You know, there is Profinet, Ethernet, also in the field and so on. Uh, Service-oriented approaches yeah, in the in, in automated systems yeah, that we are not communi communicating. We are we are looking at the communication as a service, and this was then 2000s yeah, and lead up to now. Yeah. And meanwhile, we have the situation, and it's a 2000s standard. for communication. More networking. Networking. Ah, das ist der Schreib. More networking. Yeah, and meanwhile we have the situation that more and more information or more and more logic and 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 intelligence is going to the field level yeah so i guess the penetration of the field level with bus systems will get more in future however it's just a guess yeah maybe i'm one of those who then back in the 80s said the industry pc will take over the whole automation world yeah? maybe i'm totally wrong yeah? but this is my guess this is my guess, at least, yeah? that we will, <sighs> these things will simply get that small, that the smallest element has enough power to already drive some, some, some feedback control or whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's history of automated systems. Yeah? Relays in the 1950s, in the 1960s process computers, Huge control walls, 1970s PLCs, 1980s communication started between the things even on small scale. Yeah. Industry PCs appeared, uh, automated in 1990s, automated these automated islands were interconnected to each other, and in the 2000s, standards for communication were widely spread and interoperability was finally achieved. Okay. So, like I said, Ethernet is pretty important, was getting pretty important. Also other field bus systems is like CAN bus or, or Modbus or, or Profibus, for instance, uh, are there in the field. However, above the field level, most of it is running on Ethernet and TCP IP. Hmm. Next time, we're going to talk about what is a process automation system. What are, you know, what are the typical things a process automation system does have? Yeah? How is it built yeah? from a logical point of view? Far away, so that it looks easy <laughs> to have an overview. This will then be next video for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.